Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Schwartz, the Executive Director of the Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology. I am with Dawson Church, author of Genie and Your Genes, president of EFT University. Hi, Dawson. How are you doing? Bob, great, and it's good to be here with you. And you'll be giving a keynote at our upcoming conference. I am really excited about that because the implications of some of the new research and science showing up now is that these formerly what were thought of as being alternative approaches like energy psychology are now coming squarely into the mainstream as we can measure their effects in our bodies using tools like genetic tests, using tools like hormonal assays, using tools like, like EEGs, they're showing they make big changes in our bodies. So I'm just thrilled to be part of this expanding and exciting new field of science. Yeah, it is pretty amazing, isn't it? So perhaps uh, you can, uh, we wanna, we're just, we're creating a, a short video to give people a little bit of knowledge so they can, and then to also let them know what else to expect uh, at, at the conference. Tell us, tell us some, tell us one really golden nugget uh, that people can learn right here, right now uh, about the science that you're, you're talking about. Well, I'm right now I'm peer reviewing an article for a journal and it's now the third study third study showing that EFT has a direct effect on our genes. It's literally dialing down our inflammation genes and inflammation has been called the final common pathway in all disease. Mm -hmm. And what it's showing is that EFT literally dials down, down regulates those inflammation genes. And the other encouraging counterpart of that is that even as inflammation genes are being down regulated, immunity genes are being upregulated. So we're seeing these phenomenal effects in our bodies at the level of gene expression. Now, if that isn't exciting, tell me what is, Bob. <laughs> that's, that's, pretty ex that's pretty exciting. Right. This ain't, this ain't just, this ain't just your, mo your, your uncle, uh, Tom, you know, buy a some tonic, right? Dr. Bob's uh, elixir of uh, metal pure aches and bones and everything. Well, it used to be just people's word for what worked, and there was clinical observation. Of course, clinical observation comes a long time before experimental evidence. Of course. For aspirin, we, we knew that it worked for 100 years before we knew, knew how it worked. Penicillin was over 30 years between knowing that it worked, knowing how it worked. Now, we're realizing that energy psychology doesn't just work. We're realizing how it works, and that is so tremendously exciting. Um, there might be some people who don't, um, I mean, I don't know what they'll know or don't know, but I, you know, this, ep this idea of epigenetics. So when you say um, turning genes on and off, perhaps you could uh, say a, a few words about, um, about, for someone that doesn't know what epigenetics is, what epigenetics is. Sure. Epigenetics is simply the activation of genes from the environment, either the environment outside the cell or the environment outside the body. And the simplest possible example is that if you are, for example, walking down the street, having a relaxed stroll and a barking dog with this large with big fangs drooling at the mouth runs out barking at you, you get startled, you get scared, and you go to the fight or flight response. What's happening there is that your genes that code for stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol are kicking in, and you're having a big surge of those adrenaline and cortisol stress hormones in your body, which enables you to take evasive action. You're in fight or flight. So that's an example of an external environmental event, the barking dog, getting translated into an internal signal telling your genes that code for these stress hormones, cortisol, adrenaline, to turn on. And it doesn't happen in 10 minutes. It happens in three seconds or less that those genes reach peak expression. So, well, that's let, let, so let me ask you about that, because there may be some people that don't know. And, and actually, is this really... Uh, um, it's literally turning on a gene at that moment or um, because there are bodily processes happening all the time. Um, are we saying, and is this the science, that it's really genes turning on and turning off and turning on and turning off just because 
you know, my body outputs a little, a little adrenaline today, you know, because of the dogs barking. Isn't that just my body kind of doing what it does? It doesn't have to be turning on genes per se. Yes, because these are big, complicated molecules. These are protein molecules. There are over 100,000 different proteins in your body. And these are, they have, they, if you look at, at diagrams of them, then they have folds. They have different charges at different places in this complicated uh, scheme of the molecule. And the instructions, the blueprints, how to make those very complex molecules are contained in the genes. And so, for example, if uh, I just had breakfast a little while ago, and so my stomach is now producing hydrochloric acid. So the genes that code for that molecule have to be activated for my body to digest. So all, all the time, you have clock genes that govern your circadian rhythms. You have digestive genes that are, are governing the, the activation of those, those digestive enzymes in your stomach. You have, you have you know, thousands, of, thousands of genes creating thousands of proteins in your body, and those are changing based on the environment, based on your behavioral state, even based on learning and experience. If I'm paying close attention now, that's activating certain genes that wouldn't be, wouldn't be activated if I was just sitting in my, on my couch reading a book. So that is really, I think, maybe the point here for energy psychology approaches is that it's not just um, walking down the street. Well, I'm walking down the street and the car backfires. If I haven't had a history of trauma and things blowing up, I might go, oh, there goes a car backfiring. So uh, my genes don't turn on. Uh, my cortisol doesn't go up. Right. No big deal. Right. However, if I was a, 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 a veteran, then that might be different. Yeah, and in fact, there's a, there are two paths of the brain. One is called the short path, one is called the long path. And if you're a veteran and you hear that sound of that car backfiring, then what can happen is that information can go directly to your HPA axis to activate the fight or fight response and bypass the long path which sends a signal through the prefrontal cortex to discriminate right. whether it was a car backfiring or it was a gunshot and you're going to have a flashback to be, being back in Vietnam or Afghanistan. And so what happens in veterans, for example, who have PTSD is their brain gets so used to using the short path, they're on hair trigger alert all the time. Right. We all know people like that. They, they're, they're offended by the slightest little thing. They're sensitive. They're hypersensitive. They're hypervigilant to potential threats. And that's what happens over time as our brains literally rewire themselves in response to trauma. And so your position would be that, and my too, but since you're, you're you know, the EFT or other energy psychology approaches probably do the same thing. When you work on, uh, when you tap on these various traumatic memories, uh, you begin to unwire the wiring uh, that says, take the short path. You kind of that's say, the, yeah, that's the amazing thing. So if you've been taking the short path for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, one colonel, for example, who's part of our volunteer program, uh, he, he denied he had PTSD after Vietnam. 35 years after Vietnam, he woke up one night and he had his hands around his wife's neck and he was strangling her in his sleep. Whoa. Okay. That's PTSD, and that's what I call the dark side of neural plasticity, is the brain's rewiring itself for stress right. year after year after year after year, and those symptoms often get worse over time. So the, the, the light side of neural plasticity is if I go and learn a new language, learn a new skill, ha have a new friend. I'm learning, I'm adding new neurons on the, along those pathways. But if I'm stressed, if I'm hypervigilant, if I'm paranoid, I'm adding new neurons along those pathways. And so over time, it's not just the mind. It's not just our thoughts. It's literally our brains. And so any new incoming information is filtered through this brain that is now structured to perceive and reenact trauma. And so everything becomes a stimulus. So that's why, again, PTSD gets worse over time. But as we shift ourselves, that, that, that kernel, by the way, now does not test positive for PTSD at all after it's done heart math and after it's done EFT. So these are amazing techniques and they can literally change our behavior, change our lives and change our neural networks. That's awesome. And so, and I know what one of the main focus of what you're gonna be talking about at the conference is all the science, is the science. And you've just, this is just a little bit, little taste of uh, what people can get uh, is that I have that right, correct? 
that's the starting point where I'm going to go with that, Bob, is going to ah. blow your mind because oh, I'm, going to use, no. I'm going to do a thought experiment and project what our future will look like, what history will, how history will unfold over the next 30 to 50 years based on these findings. And I can tell you, wow. it is a very different history than if we hadn't made these discoveries and changed in these ways as a species. It's going to affect the entire planet to have these kinds of healing tools at our disposal and implement them widely. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to go. I want to ask you questions, but I'm not going to. Well, you're going to have to come to the conference. Come to the conference. Right. So it's the website for the conference, folks, is energypsychologyconference.com, and you'll come see Dawson Church and many other people. Uh, I am just jazzed about what Dawson's going to talk about. This, you know, I, I got to tell you what, I, I, I'm a Star Trek fan. I always talk about Star Trek. And I'm reminded there's this great scene in Star Trek IV where they go into the past and Dr. McCoy gets all upset. He goes, fungoscopic examination, fungoscopic. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so maybe one day, 40 years from now, they're going to go going, Talk therapy, Jim. I can't believe it. I <laughs> talk therapy. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? So I'm really well, looking forward to hear what you have to say. You know, a century ago, diphtheria, typhoid, cholera were killing huge numbers of people. A century ago, the great influenza epidemic killed more people than World War I, okay? That's where we were just 100 years ago. So we will look back on where we are now 50 years from now and think many of the medical procedures we do are barbaric. We'll think a lot of the psychotherapy we do is barbaric compared to where we will be just by the middle of the century. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much, Dawson. Everybody, we'll see you June 2nd through 5th, Santa Clara, California, energypsychologyconference.com. Thanks, Dawson. See you there. For a good time, be there. Right. <laughs> and we have a great party, too. All right. Thanks, good. Dawson. Thank you.